So, Kentucky Derby 150 did not disappoint. I think all of us would agree. Some of us are lighter in the wallet. Uh, I didn't see Mystic Dan coming uh, with this one, but uh, we will. Uh, when we take a look at the race, uh, we will point a couple things out from it that I thought were interesting. And uh, we're going to watch this a couple of times because I think it's noteworthy to take a look at the stretch in particular. And uh, most of you know what I'm referring to there. But uh, but here we go. They're off. And I thought it was a pretty level break. Saw so a little hopping um, from fierceness. But really didn't have any excuses. He got to where he, he needed to. And uh, Mystic Dan went right to the rail. And in our post analysis, uh, we did mention that that would be a really good post. And was it ever? Just a perfect place to save ground. Uh, just Steele was, a, just Steel was a more uh, keen than I thought he would be being up uh, on the leaders. I thought he'd be more mid pack. And, uh, Saving all the ground uh, into that turn. Yeah, I don't think it I don't know if it necessarily did him in. I just didn't Aaron think Leone he was going to have it today. And, uh, the, the distance was a little questionable, Marie but and I think he just bounced so off that Arkansas Derby. Up here. Anyway, you see fierceness, no excuses whatsoever. He is in perfect position. And Mystic Dan saving all the ground, and we've got our closes back where they were. I thought catching Freedom would be a little more forwardly placed than he was, and he's got a good ground saving uh, trip going as well. Just right behind Catalytic there. Look back for Sierra you can see Leone. he's starting to inch his way up. Um, I thought there were no excuses for him at all. I thought he had a really uh, a very solid trip, and he just wasn't fast enough. That's what it came down to. But I thought he ran a good derby. See, he's saving ground on the rail. Resilience ran huge. We were going nuts. We, I, I thought he had a chance at one point. they come toward the top of the stretch. It is Fierceness who's moving up on the outside of Track Fenton. And Stronghold, both in the uh, Stronghold, I was pretty sure was going to back up. But look at Resilience. You see outside on the left there, Fierceness and Forever Young just button heads. And Fierceness with that paddling action. You know, he lugging in like that. I mean, I think it cost him the derby, myself. But uh, look at T.O. Password. That was a tight one, to be sure. I mean, you, Mystic Dan was just begging for the wire. But isn't that a, isn't that a typical Kenny McPeak trip? You know, saving all the ground on the rail. Taking advantage of the others doing work and cleaning up at the end. And uh, in the Derby, I won't. I don't think he was the best horse that day by any means. I thought Resilience probably was, but uh, he won. We were this close in trying to figure out who. Damn close. We're gonna take a look at that here and see how how close it actually was. I mean, that's the closest finish since Grindstone in 96. Look at this. We get a tight look now at the finish as the three come down towards the end. By a nostril. It looks like, like Mystic oh, Dan on the inside. Nose, yep. By a flared nostril, but it, obviously that's a very, uh, a very, very subjective. And Brian Hernandez thought. didn't even Mystic know. That's how close it was. It is the mirror there that will get the photo. So at the end there, as you watch them bob, that's Leon the only got look second that's by right head down bob. the line. And that dramatic finish here. One more look at the very end. The mirror is where we're looking. Mystic Dan was the horse holding Just off the other two at the end. It, and a brilliant decision by jockey Brian Hernandez to force his way through on the rail as he turned for home. That was the difference. Yeah, I mean, he got the trip. Winning, no losing. question. This and was a derby that Dan, the horse who got the, the trip was going to come out on top. And, and, the top but, you know, Forever Phillies Young ran a hell of a race in front of without question. Look at Churchill Brian Hernandez. He doesn't even know yet Dan, that he won it. Kenny McPeak and Brian Hernandez Jr., trainer and jockey, have done oh, the yeah. first Oaks double double. <laughs> Double since Ben Jones in Oaks Derby double for Kenny so McPeak. <laughs> just up at the of the amazing. Good for the hard boot. Okay, well, we're going to go back and take a look at the back stretch, or at the stretch rather, and uh, watch that uh, stretch run again because I think it's worth taking a look at. We're going to take a look at the top of the stretch again because I think this is where there was a bit of controversy about this, and uh, I think it was a really uh, impacted the race significantly, and I do think that uh, um, 
I, I think that it did. Uh, it was negative uh, for both horses coming uh, on the far right there, uh, as far as how it impacted the Derby. Now you see, if you follow the uh, the icon here, that's Forever Young, the left right there, the eleven, and there's uh, Sierra Leone starting to make his move. And you see fierceness backing up here and resilience is over here on the far right starting to make his move. And there's Mystic Dan saving all the ground on the rail. But uh, track fences, and there on the far so outside. from here, here so from right out. here, if Sierra Leone stays in that path, I think he gets the, he gets up for the win because uh you know, he'd be unencumbered, and I don't think, you know, ducking inside would really help his closing run at all. And you see Forever Young, if he stays right there, he's fine too. So they probably would have gone 1-2 with the momentum they had. And um, so we'll see what happened from here. You see that, you see Sierra Leone here with that paddling action. Uh, you see his left leg moving to the inside when he runs it goes from outside to the in and it tends to send him to the inside right there you can see that uh oh and incidentally carson blevins got a great picture of this the fox of kentucky she's on twitter and i think it was right about here she got a shot of this and it gave me the idea it almost looks like sierra leone's about ready to go down uh because of the rubbing here but look at them they're just and no stewards inquiry which I was really surprised at. And you can't see it, but right about here is where um, Tyler Gaffleone has to put his hand on Forever Young to keep just Sierra Leone straight. And a lot of people were taking a look at that, thought maybe there was some race riding there or some gamesmanship, and not at all. It was just trying to keep the horse up and uh, keep them both safe. But you see him continuing to lug in like that, it, it really impeded his momentum. And if he had just kept straight on the outside, I think he was going to go right by uh, Mystic Dan and Forever Young and win the Derby. So uh, to me, um, that was something that we that over the course of the week I had heard about and looking more closely that did start to have me a little concerned about uh, Sierra Leone. And I... I I don't think there's any doubt it cost him the race. I thought he ran a, he ran his race, and if he had just stayed straight, I think he takes down the Derby. So, and we know fierceness. Uh, pretty much, I, I I hate to say it, and I I want to be clear. I really hate to say this, but I did expect him to run that way. I won't fault anybody who bet on him. I think it was very logical, like but uh, he yeah, just was too unreliable for yes, me to get really excited Gostro about, and I'm sorry for all of those very, of you who bet on him very, very uh, because um, I think it was Mystic a very realistic bet. He had every chance, and he just didn't do it. Photo. So, so that's the, the derby. There, it happens. But a great race. Awesome finish. You know, it's going to make the Preakness pretty interesting now with uh, Muth coming into the fray. The we'll see who uh, who's going to run the race. The but, uh, the yeah, it, and a I think if Sierra Leone stays stay straight, he wins the Derby. The too bad. I know a lot of people had uh, had some big money on him, and I feel for him. But, oh, no, I hope it was a good Derby for y'all. I enjoyed it. Didn't win, but it was still a good time. It always is. Downs. And, uh, and if it's we'll see what Dan, happens in the previous. Kenny McPeak and Brian Hernandez Jr., trainer and jockey, have done oh, the yeah. first Oaks double.